All right. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 15. Behold, you are beautiful. <laughs> My love, behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. So this is our king speaking right here. This is powerful, and it's because he is doing what he hinted at before in our story. So, so far in the story, we the bride have been moving through and we're getting, we're growing in maturity in our relationship with Christ. But everywhere in our story up to this point, the bride has been 100% dependent on how he has made her feel, on how she feels in every situation. When she feels alone, she is in desperation and she freaks out. And when she feels his love for her, it's motivating, it's empowering. And she wants to just push forward into ministry. She feels like she can do anything and take on the world. But all of this is still based on her emotions, on how she feels in this. What we see here is him showing her a new revelation. He's showing her something that, that has always been true. 100% this entire time this has been true but now she is coming to a point in maturity with her relationship where she can start to grasp this and he's letting her see it he's saying behold you are beautiful and he says it twice so what he's telling her is yes this whole time you've been rejoicing over everything I've done for you, everything that I've given you, who I am to you, the fact that I am your inheritance. It has moved your heart. It has motivated your heart. It has wooed your heart. You are won over heart and soul by it. And he's saying, your heart is not the only one touched by this relationship. The God Almighty sees your beautiful and he is wooed by you his heart is wooed and moved by you and your beauty he finds you beautiful yes it is he who made you beautiful and his heart is touched and moved by it this is huge and it's because now our motivation can shift and change here we're remembering that he is the God outside of time. He can see the end result, okay? He says, your eyes are doves. In this allegory, we can look at a deeper meaning here. And instead of just going, oh, she has pretty almond-shaped eyes, we can see the deeper meaning. Doves uh, have been used throughout history uh, as like carrier pigeons, like the carrier doves. What they were used for is because they have singular vision. Uh, they focus on their destination and that's where their gaze is fixed all right when they're flying they're not they're not taking in anything else on the side they are singularly focused on where they are going and they don't stop till they read that reach that destination they keep going and keep going and keep going that's why they're able to be trained to do the incredible things that they did and that's how he sees his bride Yes, she has stumbled. Yes, she has struggled. And yes, she will stumble and struggle again. And yet he says, you have dove's eyes. Your gaze is fixed on me. I am the destination. I am your great reward. I am your inheritance. I am yours. I belong to you. And you belong to me. Wow. Here's why this is important. This is why this is so deep. I'm going to read to you uh, what Paul prayed out of Ephesians for the believers. This, this was his prayer for them. This was the cry of his heart because he got this revelation. Ephesians 1, 16 through 19, it says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? His. 
glory, inheritance, and the saints. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? He's saying, I want you to grasp this. I'm praying that your heart has this revelation because I don't know if you're praying for it. I am praying for it because this is new fuel for the fire. He's saying, get this. If nothing else, grasp this. You are his glorious inheritance. You are his inheritance and he calls it glorious. You are the reason he died on the cross. You are the reason he suffered and endured. A relationship with you is what his gaze was fixed on. He desires it. His glorious inheritance in the saints. His glorious inheritance in the bride. And here's why this is important. We can stop living off of how we feel. We can stop living off of our own emotions and saying, I feel so alone. I feel so this or that or the other. A revelation like this can carry you through the desert. It can carry you through a wilderness. You can go through the valley of the shadow of death with this revelation. And it's because whether you feel it or anything or not, you know you have the wisdom of God inside of you. You have this revelation. The eyes of your heart have been enlightened. You've been given this understanding that what you do moves his heart. What you do excites his heart. What you do is beautiful to him. That can motivate you. That can carry you through a really hard time where you don't feel anything. And it's because you know whether you feel it or not, his heart is moved. His heart is wooed by you. And you are his inheritance. And he is worthy of you presenting that glorious inheritance to him. It is what he desires. It is the only thing he has desired outside of the Trinity. Do you understand that? He has had everything he needs. Everything he desires is inside the Trinity, and but he desired you. He desired relationship with us. He desired a glorious inheritance. That's what you were created for. That's what you were made for. This revelation will fuel you. It will carry you through those dry, hard, harsh seasons where we feel alone, where we feel deserted, where I feel like I am just sitting in the silence of God. But I am dwelling and meditating. I've, I've been given this revelation. I can choose day to day, and I can choose in the valley of the shadow of death to know that his gaze is on me, and I touch the heart of God. It's going to motivate me in ministry because I'm no longer doing this out of obligation. I'm not doing this out of how I feel. And my fuel doesn't run out when I don't feel like doing it. My fuel doesn't run out and it's because it's based off of something outside of myself now. My hope gets fixed on something outside of me. I am wishy-washy. My emotions are all over the place and they're gonna keep being all over the place. And he is gonna even use that for his glory and it's because he's gonna overwhelm my emotions consistently. He'll keep bringing me back. I will be motivated by how I feel. But in those dry desert seasons, a deeper well that I can draw from is that I touch the heart of God is that you touch the heart of God. Your faithfulness, when you don't feel it, is exciting to God. And he is saying, wow, you are beautiful. He says it twice. You are so beautiful, my love. You are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. Your gaze is fixed on me. You can see it. I can feel it. You can see beyond this struggle. You can see beyond this valley. You can see beyond this pain. You can see me 
And guess what? That is what carried me. I saw you through my valley. I saw you through my pain. You get that oneness with me in this. We are the bride of Christ. Our wedding day is here and yet to come. It's a mystery. It's already here and it's not yet. The kingdom of heaven has come and it's coming. Our beloved has come and he is coming. Get this revelation. He, the, he says the two become one. This is our marriage. This is our relationship with God. We get to be one with him in this. We get to love him how he loved us. We get to be his great reward. Only a revelation like that will carry us through a desert. Only a revelation like that will carry us and sustain us when we are hurt and broken and we feel alone and we feel abandoned. Knowing this, you can say, I'm not. You can declare God's truth over your life. I am not alone. I have not been abandoned. His gaze is fixed on me right now. He feels my love right now. And he knew, he knew on the cross, he knew before the foundations of the earth were laid that I would have this moment, that I would choose him in my suffering. And he said, that's worth dying for. That's worth redeeming that bride, her right there. I want it's worth it to me. Her gaze is worth it to me because it's a dove's gaze. It's fixed on me. Pray and ask God for this revelation. It will carry you. I think a lot of the church has been offered this revelation and we've said, no, 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 no. There's no way I could be that beautiful. No, I'm wretched. I'm, I'm all, you know, I'm so unworthy. And would they just sit there in that? And they don't grasp and hold on to this and say, yes, I am redeemed. Yes, I am beautiful to him. I am beautiful to God. Yes, I move the heavens and the heart of God with my gaze, with my simple, small yes. If we sit there and we just say that, no, I'm so unworthy. I'm so dirty. I'm so unclean. And we don't hold on to this. When we go through those desert seasons, we're going to be so offended. We're going to be so hurt. We will run from God. And if we don't get this, if we don't grasp onto this and hold onto this and pray it and declare it and worship out of this place, I can worship and not always feel in my heart moved. But guess what my worship does? It moves Him. I have a deeper revelation of this we're still at the beginning of our journey we're still at the beginning of the bride walking in a maturity but a mature believer has this revelation a mature believer knows how to call on God out of this knows how to declare God's truth over our lives out of this revelation out of this truth that has always been true it's always been there for us but grasping it is what's going to make our ministry powerful. Grasping it is what's going to make us dangerous to the enemy. And it's because he can no longer touch us. If I know that I am the bride of Christ, if I know this truth, what can he do to me? No amount of suffering can take me from him. Not heaven, not hell, not angel, not demon can pull me away from that. Nothing can touch that because God's gaze is fixed on me. I belong to him. I am his inheritance. And not only that, he belongs to me. He is my inheritance. You can't do anything to take it away from me. It's mine. Be blessed in that. In the name of Jesus.